All right. Well, welcome to the show, Dustin. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad to have you on the uh, on the podcast. So thanks for coming in. Happy to be and here. Coming into the studio. Not everyone wants to make a trip downtown. That's okay. So. I mean, we've seen downtown. It's a bit of a mess right now. It took me a long time to find parking. I thought I was going to leave, but <laughs> made it okay. <laughs> well, if you've ridden a bike, you'd have been just fine. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, cool. Well, welcome to the show. So, um, you know, for those of you know, those of our listeners who don't know, your the company is called Local Laundry uh, that you're with. And how long have you guys been doing it? So we founded Local Laundry in 2015, officially okay. incorporated 2016 when we officially took things off the ground. Mm. So it's been... Oh, it's been a while. So it's been a while. Nine years, ten, almost 10 years. Yeah. That's cool. And what's the general concept? It's yeah. So basic idea. Local Laundry uh, started in, in 2016. And the yeah. premise behind it was really on how to create something that, that allowed us to proudly represent local. Mm -hmm. We were seeing some trends in the market. There was you know local farm-to-table food. There was local craft beer. There was sort of this movement to support local artisans, local makers. And at the time, Calgary didn't have a local clothing company that allowed Calgarians to really proudly represent where they're from. Mm -hmm. Now, this is back in 2015. And if you're from Calgary, you know, in 2015, wasn't the easiest time, right? There was a lot of layoffs. Yeah. Oil and gas sector was down. Calgary was sort of uncertain about its future. There was talk of Calgary being the next Detroit. And so mm -hmm. I think a lot of people wanted to really proudly showcase that they're Calgary and really band together and, yeah. and show that they're proud of the city and show their support for the city. And so we came in really at an opportune time and our very first product that really took off was the YYC, right? That iconic. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we have that sure. trademark now. Uh, that was really the big kind of thing that took off. And since then, we've just grown and adapted. Mm -hmm. and, and we've always been a little bit more ambitious than just being a small local clothing company. Yeah. And so we've kind of grown and adapted since then. But now, you know, we make everything is responsibly made here in Canada. We have five pillars of building community, and that's really the premise behind the brand is yeah. that we don't just sell shirts, we, we build community. And we've right. done that in a number of different ways. A big part of that is we want to donate a million dollars to local charities by 2030. We're almost 20% of the way there. We just surpassed mm. $200,000 cool. last year. Uh, we have a giving garments program. So for every pair of socks, toque, uh, blanket that we sell, we donate one to shelters. We've donated over 10,000 mm. items to shelters all across Canada throughout the course of the brand. So it's really about trying to not only create a brand that allows Calgary's Calgarians to proudly represent where they're from, but we've expanded now to really being about the Calgary lifestyle, which is one of, you know, wanting something that's a little bit of higher quality. It is local. We're supporting something that's responsible and we're progressive and we like to give back and, right. and not in a way that's in your face kind of flashy. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit more of a, uh, just to showcase that, you know, here I am. I'm, I'm someone that's a little bit more creative, entrepreneurial, want to do good, want to give back and want right. to make a difference. So do you source all of your child labor locally? No child labor. <laughs> can proudly say that. Um, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say officially. I have two young kids and yeah, you know, yeah. when they're sick, they come into the warehouse. So okay. I won't say that we're completely child free. Uh, but uh, they, uh, yeah, they're, they're super proud. Yeah. Every time they see something on the street, they go, dad, dad, there's your, there's your yeah, shirt. Yeah. Someone's wearing your brand. So that's really that's cool. Awesome. Uh, but we're, we're, we're proud to be made yeah. in Canada. There's, yeah. there's not a lot of it. Uh, in fact, prior to 1989, over 75% of all clothing bought and sold in Canada was actually made in Canada. When, wow, really? When Canada so opened So what up, year was that? Prior to 1989. 89. Really? And then you fast forward to 2020, I believe was the last stat. Hmm. Uh, it's less than 5%. Wow. So That's you crazy. imagine the billions of dollars of industry of, of clothing uh, over those years was just completely yeah. decimated. And so Canada does not mm. have many manufacturers left when it comes to clothing. Yeah. Um, it's still a very small industry, but we're really proud to still support that industry and yeah. and support. It, uh, it's interesting when you look at statistics and you, you know, like to say, well, we went from, what was it, 75 to 5%. But what's interesting is if you look at the raw numbers, it's probably like, really skewed because the amount of clothing people buy today versus in 1975 has got to be way more yeah exponentially yeah. larger so and and a lot of that comes down to it it being cheaper and more accessible yeah right when it was made in canada it was quality you know it would have been a little bit more pricey but all it was was hudson bay blankets that's all <laughs> that was available then You'd be surprised. <laughs> so one of our manufacturer, he's third generation. Yeah. His 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 father and, and his father started the company and it yeah. was one of the largest gene manufacturers in North America based out Who of was it? What was it? Uh, I can't remember their name back then. They have a different name now. Huh. Um, but family run business. And really? so there are these these deep ties to industry yeah. that we wouldn't know because 
all we know is that we, we go to the mall and we buy a pair yeah. of jeans and it's pretty faceless. You know, there's, we yeah. don't know anything behind the scenes. We see the tags of, oh, it's better cotton initiative, so it must be good. But there's still yeah. a lot that happens mm. behind the scenes that, you know, as a consumer we're unaware of. And that's not just clothing, that's any industry. Uh, but the more that we started to learn about the industry, and when we first started, we weren't made in Canada. We were just, hey, yeah. give us a sweater. We'll put yeah, our logo yeah. on it. Great. Started to learn a little bit more about the industry. We were completely new to it. Started to learn a little bit more about supply chain and manufacturing and, and quite frankly, how bad uh, the clothing industry is for, for mm -hmm. people, for the planet, the toxic dyes, for the workers. And that's when we kind of decided to make a change. It's like, listen, our name is Local Laundry. We really should be made locally here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And if our mission is to build community and to do better and to give back, you know, that should go from every thread of our company, which includes yeah. how we manufacture our clothing. Huh. So are so the clothing that you guys have is actually manufactured in Canada. It like is, it's yeah. oh okay. Yeah. So raw materials has to come from elsewhere. You can't there's yeah. not not a lot of cotton grown in Canada. So I mean if you did hundred yeah. percent polyester, sure. Right. Yeah, polyester right. obviously we we we're, we're known for that sure. in this city yeah. alone. Uh, but outside of that, you know, we don't have a great cotton cl growing climate. That's, yeah. that's not possible. <laughs> not Bamboo best. doesn't grow well no. here. And so unless you're doing some sort of indoor hydroponic yeah, yeah. vertical farming, uh, which at that point, you know, the raw tough. material alone itself yeah. would be extremely expensive and, and you're, you're priced yeah. out of most of the market. Huh. So, so where is materials come like in. sewing wise, where is that done? Is that done in Calgary or is that? Uh, so it's a mix. So we've worked with one manufacturer in Calgary. Most mm -hmm. of our manufacturing happens in kind of Toronto area. Uh, some of our stuff's okay. in Richmond. So it's, it's kind of, uh, around there's there's different factories in different areas of the country that uh, specialize in, in certain things but yeah all of it happens all the sewing happens in calgary so the vast Ooh. majority of our clothing is dyed knit cut sewn and milled right here in canada wow that's cool we went into uh we had a client for the other business we do uh that's in calgary that does uh i don't even know what they make actually to be sh to be honest but it they it was basically you know a sewing farm it was like you go in and it's just sewing machines everywhere and they had cutting tables i have never in my life seen so much dust <laughs> like lint dust it was like like no exaggeration like piled high like an inch and like and more in some spots in that place it was amazing yeah so and they must be like you'd be breathing it if you didn't have face mask on so yeah, yeah. It, it is um not that cotton would necessarily wouldn't kill you, but yeah, but yeah. still, you know, you should be breathing pollutants. everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a few of the factories we walk through, and it's pretty incredible to see the difference. But some of them, you know, we'll, you'll walk through, and it's like I, I would feel comfortable, you know, scraping my finger off the yeah. floor and, and yeah. you know, licking it. Not that I'd want to, but yeah. That's that's kind of what you like to see, right? And that's one of the benefits too about manufacturing in Canada is you actually get to walk through the factories right. and you get to see the people making your clothes, and you get to have good real excuse me, good relationships yeah. with, with the factory owners. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty important part. Most clothing companies that, that we know, or that are kind of in our similar space, you know, they've never visited the factory. They have mm -hmm. no idea what the conditions are. Uh, they get sent, you know, a brochure about how good things are, but you know, there's no spot sure. check, there's no verification. So again, it gives us that, that confidence knowing that we know the family, we know, yeah. the business we know the conditions we know the workers mm -hmm. and uh, and we have a great relationship with them is it expensive like labor is more expensive in canada yeah. bottom line yeah. so what does that add like what's the delta like if you had a you guys do hoodies so if you had a hoodie what's the labor delta for a hoodie from you know made in mexico china taiwan wherever to canada or calgary yeah We've never really run the numbers and partly because I don't, I don't think we want to, Yeah, <laughs> but I can tell you that if you take our, one of our t-shirts, for example, yeah. you know, the, the cost of manufacturing that is roughly four to five times as much. Mm. So I can go and get a, a blank white t-shirt for uh 20% of the cost of what I'm paying for mine. Right. And a big component of that is obviously labor yeah. is, is the biggest thing. Um, but it's also, the Canadian economy, right? Like we're yeah. paying Canadian rent in that facility. Right. We're paying Canadian overhead, Canadian staff. It's all going back mm -hmm. to the Canadian economy versus, you know, somewhere overseas. They're going to have much cheaper overhead expenses. They're going to have much cheaper building and taxes and, and sure. all the above, right? And yeah. so none of that money comes into the country. And I think that's one of the things that we see uh, and and why we're we're proud to manufacture yeah. in Canada. I think there's a big wave, especially in the U.S. right now. Made in America is pretty big. Right. But it, it comes back to that, like the whole piece of that supply chain is going back to support the country, and and it makes the economy stronger. Right. Clothing is less than five percent of all clothing bought and sold in Canada is made in Canada, but that five percent contributes contributes very positively 
mm-hmm. to the overall economy and it helps strengthen and, and give diversity. So yeah. uh, economically speaking, yeah, it's far more expensive to do it here, but that's not something with local laundry that we really want to change. Yeah, I guess the cool thing about it being local is that you have control over quality and, and you know, the product itself and whatnot. I've always been shocked by, you know, anytime you, you bring stuff from China and you just don't know what's going to show up. And if it shows up, you know, that's, you don't. that's the trick too. Yeah. And culturally too, that's one thing that we've learned over the years is, is every, every country is different culture wise in terms of how yeah. they do business, right? Mm-hmm. China, uh, especially there, there's very much, there's the importance of a relationship there. Right. And so mm-hmm. if you're going to fly and visit the factory prior to putting in an order, you're going to kind of go above the line a little bit in, in terms of how they're going to treat your product or how they're going to treat yeah. it. If you're buying sight unseen, it's just straight transactional, right. you know, culturally there's not much there to it. And so you're yeah. going to get what you get. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that there's not high quality stuff oh, sure. overseas. Cause there yeah. are certainly things that, you know, we just don't manufacture well in Canada because yeah. economically it just doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, there was a Calgary based sock manufacturing company that just mm. closed down recently. And part of it was, you know, they had these really beautiful, but expensive machines from Italy and, the cost to maintain mm, them and, and yeah. just didn't work. Right? right. So that's not to say that there's not quality products overseas or there's not well-made products overseas. And, and, you know, we, we certainly can't do or buy everything in Canada. Um, but it's just sort of going after that fast fashion, low quality, wear it once, twice ends up at the landfill. You know, yeah. that's one of the things that we're trying to at least be conscious of and yeah. avoid. Are you, uh, is your, I'll call it factory. Is it in Calgary or where, no. where do you have it? So we, we don't do the manufacturing. Oh, okay. Ourselves. Not in Calgary. Yeah. Okay. So we work with a number of different partners yeah. across Canada. Is there, as you go across Canada, do you see, you know, differences in cost of, you know, there's cost uh, differences in rent and, you know, what people's expectations are income wise. Do you, do you feel that like when you're traveling? You know, I can't say that I've seen a huge part of it. And, and maybe it's because we're not in the operations of yeah. that business. You know, we just see what the prices that we're paying are. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell you post 2020, you know, we've seen numerous increases consistently, hmm. right? Year over year, yeah. sometimes multiple increases within a year. So that that rising cost of inflation within Canada, which is, you know, the rent, it's the labor, it's yeah. everything, uh, certainly has impacted us, no question. Yeah, I've seen, you know, like just being downtown, there's cheap rent downtown in Calgary. You could probably set up a big business in downtown Calgary cheaper than you could set it up in the Beltline, which is is crazy, or even in the in the industrial areas. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, do, are you shipping from like sh- products coming to Calgary, and you're shipping from Calgary? Yeah. Yeah. How's uh, how's shipping? How bad <laughs> is that? <laughs> it's funny. I made the news uh, last year, last year, two years ago. Yeah. So I made a TikTok that went viral about the, the astronomical shipping costs of Calgary. Yeah. So if I look at like last 90 days an ex- as an example, and keep in mind, probably about 60% of our customers are, are local to Calgary. Okay. And so we offer yeah, yeah. free local pickup. Uh, sure. We offer, you know, local delivery here. So for $5, we'll, we'll deliver anywhere in Calgary, usually oh, same that's day. Cool. Wow, that's very cool. And then, you know, $10 kind of flat rate shipping across Canada. Yeah. And, and the thing that we've learned at least online and e-commerce is, you know, if you keep that shipping cost low, you're going to increase your conversion. Yeah, right? People absolutely. are more likely to check out. You buy a $108 sweater, last thing you want to do is pay an additional 10 yeah, bucks for shipping. Totally. Uh, so we're conscious of that, but I look at my cost on, you know, the last 90 days. And this, this takes into consideration people that have picked up people that have bought the local yep. pickup. I think it was about $14 was my average shipping cost mm. per, per order. Yeah. So that, that adds up, right? When yeah. I'm selling a t-shirt to somewhere in Nova Scotia, I think I've, I've lost money on certain orders. If it's like rural Nova Scotia, I'm charging them $10 yeah. front rate, but that's costing me $28 to ship a t-shirt. Right. And so there are, there have been cases where it's like the margin just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. I've lost money on that order. Yep. Now, do I want to cancel that $10 shipping? No. Right. That's one that it's just, I'm going to take a loss on that one, knowing that I'm going to get more that that won't be a loss, but right. shipping is it's outrageous. Yeah, it is. It yeah. would actually, when we first launched the business, we launched on, uh, it was a service called the Printful. So hmm. Connor, Connor was the original, he came up with the original idea. Connor okay. was doing his MBA in Sweden. So backstory to, to how we started. He was doing his MBA in Sweden. Um, hmm. Wow, really? This is where the, hmm. yeah, so he's, his parents are Irish. He's got Irish citizenship. Okay. So got laid off from oil and gas 2015, trying to figure out, you know, what's, yeah. what's sort of next or 2013. And uh, looked at, okay, well, I've got Irish EU citizenship. So where can I go that's, huh. you know, far away 
and free. And so he found a great university called wow. Yevla in Sweden, got his MBA for free. So great, wow, great that's deal. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. And it was there where he had the initial idea. So Connor just graduated from his MBA. I just graduated from university. So both of us broke students, you know, just starting mm-hmm. work, didn't have any money to put into this thing. So we launched in the lowest cost, lowest risk way possible. So we launched on a service called the Printful, which essentially meant we had launched a Shopify store, that Shopify store linked to the Printful, and every time someone would order on the website, automatically send an order to the Printful. They had this massive warehouse in LA, they would just go, and if you ordered a black YYC t-shirt, they'd grab a black medium t-shirt off the shelf that we picked, which was American Apparel at the time, first first t-shirts that we printed on, they would digitally print it and they would ship it out. Right, right. Great for us, right? No overhead, no mm-hmm. cost. We didn't have to buy a big box of t-shirts that we never knew if we'd sell, just yep. sit in our garage forever. Low margin. And <laughs> low margin for sure. But it was a great way to test, yeah, yeah. right? We had no idea if this was going to yeah. take off. And quite frankly, we never expected it to. We never thought we'd be yeah. in the position we are now. But all that to say is that this this low cost drop shipping shipping out of LA, we had someone order one to New Zealand mm. and it was cheaper for us to ship a package from LA to New Zealand than it was for us to ship a package of, of a hat from Calgary to Calgary. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. 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 We had a, uh, we had a small, uh, online business that was selling tactical equipment, I guess we'll go with that. And it was outrageous. Like it, it kind of, the shipping was destroying us. And then, when the margins slipped on any of the product, like you're exactly the same experience. Like, you know, if we were shipping just something small titanium thing that was $10, you know, the, the shipping cost was just outrageous. And then you not, it's not just shipping it because as you know, you have to put it in something and then you have to like physically go from wherever that thing is to where you're going to ship it from. And it's just, yeah, it's outrageous. So. It adds up and it really yeah. eats into, especially as a small business, mm-hmm. it, it eats into your margin. And yeah. so, you know, we're, we're kind of on the mindset of that. If, if you're going to stay small, you're, you're not going to make it right. You have yeah. to grow. You have to be continuously getting bigger in order to get more economies of scale to truly start to see your business grow. Yeah. Um, staying small forever is a recipe for disaster. I think once you're big enough, you can negotiate flat rates well, like with shipping and you can just say, we're going to, we'll pay you a hundred thousand a year or just ship everything we do. There's an expectation to the volume. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's technology that's helping with that, right? I think yeah. that that's one advantage. There's a lot mm-hmm. of bulk rate carrier discounts out there, right? Where you sign up for one service and they've got, they've got accounts with every major carrier and because they have, you know, 3000 customers that are e-commerce customers that are using yeah, the platform, right. they get these, these <clears throat> access to larger rates. So there is a little right. bit of that happening. That's good. Uh, and so that helps a little bit, but you know, still yeah. shipping is a major expense. I'll give you my conspiracy theory of the week. So I ordered something uh, from Canada and they, I don't get a lot of shipments from Canada post. They ship it by Canada post. The next day I had two text messages on my cell phone saying that the, they, and it wasn't from Canada Post, saying that my product couldn't be delivered, we weren't here or whatever, and I was supposed to click on the link. The next day, another two. The next day, another two. Like how, isn't it weird that suddenly I'm on Canada Post and these, whoever it is, has my cell phone number. So something, you know, something's happening. There's someone's Someone's letting out information. I've gotten probably... 12 in the last week yeah. of your UPS package hasn't been, yeah. oh, please see here for, yeah, there's, it's, it's weird that it's so something, something, there's a leak of information there somehow. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And a little scary. A little scary. There's a lot of, yeah. a lot of scams out there. And I, I feel, I feel for, for some of the older generation, like I think of my grandpa, right? He mm-hmm. was in his seventies, eighties and oh yeah. Would, wouldn't really know any better, right? You're, yeah. you're, uh, you're going to click on some of these links and yeah. you know, my you're parents, scared. Like it's, they, they scare you. It, yeah. They do. And you know, we, we've started to, to play with AI in our business and use yeah. AI in our business, but similar conversation around, mm-hmm. you know, the, the dark cases of AI and, and where yeah. that's going because there's some pretty, uh, pretty wild implications. So oh far. yeah. No I, kidding. It, it is a powerful tool. And I will say we use it in our business all the time. And yeah. it's it's essentially another employee that we can rely on. Right. Uh, I've used it for, for so many different things. And you have to be careful where you use it and how you use it. But at the end of the day, uh, it can be a very powerful tool, whichever way you're using it for. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing, well, in fact, it's funny, every single podcast we've done over the last little while, it's like AI is coming up in the conversation. So it's 
obviously it's a big deal. It's <laughs> a big deal. It's not going away. No. So when you when you guys are one thing that's kind of was on my mind is like I have uh, you know, I buy a lot of gym clothes all the time. And sometimes I think, man, it would be cool to just have my own logo, have my own my own size, whatever. Do you guys and you guys do some customization? How how deep into customization do you do? Yeah, so we question of how deep. So I'll give the backstory of how we got here. Mm -hmm. So we started the company back in 2015, primarily e-commerce online. Yeah, yeah. We had a couple stores find us, want to carry us, reached out. So they said, hey, can we carry your, your product in our stores? Great. We started doing wholesale. Started doing more and more wholesale, got into some larger accounts like Below the Belts, Marks, Sporting Life. Uh, we sell in the airport and a couple other ones. And so that became a pretty big part of our business. Mm -hmm. So 2020, fast forward, 65% of our revenue is wholesale, selling into mm -hmm. stores. Uh, great little business. Obviously with COVID, all the doors closed. Retail stopped ordering. Yeah. We lost 65% of our revenue overnight. Ooh. So pretty quickly had to figure out what we were going to do. And we went back to some of the things that we'd said no to in the past. And so we would always have customers reaching out to us saying, hey, can I put my logo on your shirts? Mm -hmm. And we're like, no, we're a retail brand. You know, we, we don't really do that. That's, that's, not our, that's not our thing. Sorry, I'll pass. Uh, and then obviously when you lose most of your revenue, you have to go back to some of the things you've said no yeah. to in the past. And so restarted some of those conversations and say, Hey, remember that time you reached out and wanted to, Hey, do you still want to mm -hmm. like, yeah, great. I'd love to. So we're like, fantastic. So we did a couple of those, did a, did a couple more. And then six months later, uh, Shaw, Shaw business launched their Shaw mobile. And, uh, mm -hmm. we ended up getting a local laundry made in Canada garment on every single Shaw employee in Canada. Wow. So bit of a light bulb moment that we're missing out on a pretty big opportunity here. And, you know, fast forward now, that's about 75% of our revenue is, is custom. And wow. so I think a couple of things that have happened, but we've sort of noticed, I mean, that local trend has spilled over to business. Businesses mm -hmm. now want to have more local options and they want to print their merch on, on companies and products that more align with their values. Right. We're seeing that industry change, right? No longer do they just want that cheap $2 yeah. t-shirt that's going to be worn once and then thrown out. Yeah. Right. I think not only do companies have a responsibility within all their supply chain to be thinking a little bit more responsibly, but also their employees, right? Their employees or their, their customers, they don't want to be wearing these things. They just end up in their pajama yeah. drawer. So uh, by being able to print on something that's local, that's made in Canada, that has a charitable component, and that's really high quality, they've noticed that their employees or whoever they give them to their customers are wearing them a lot more. Mm. And so it becomes a much better piece for that company from a branding perspective because their logo is being seen more. Their employees are super happy with the quality and it's, it's actually something that they want to wear. And it just goes back to how that, how that relationship is. And the, the employees see that while well, the company actually values us a little bit more yeah. because you know, we're not just getting cheap. Yeah. Crap that we're not going to wear. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yes, that customization has become a very big part of our business. Uh, and in fact, that's kind of the primary engine for growth. So right. we won't do uh, all the way down to like creating a spec garment for you. Right. Um, unless we're talking about, you know, a, a huge order of, mm -hmm. of a thousand pieces, right? We've talked to, okay. we're right now, <clears throat> we're working with um, a hotel that's opening in Calgary and they, uh, I don't know if it's Calgary, but a hotel that's opening and they're looking for some made in Canada bathrobes. Hmm. So that's one where it's, you know, it's an interesting uh -huh. project. We're actually going down the route of, of creating our own kind of tech pack and producing yeah. it for them. Um, but yeah, just kind of depends on the product. Most of it is here's our, you know, signature black bamboo crew neck, very yeah. soft, very high quality. We have them in stock. We'll print your logo on it. And you know, that's the order, Yeah. but we can do some pretty neat customization stuff. Yeah. That's cool. My son's in, uh, this, this doesn't make sense in the conversation. Really, My son's in Guatemala and uh, he goes to these, uh, they're called uh, PACA and they're this, these little thrift stores essentially. And they have clothing there that's, who knows? He hasn't figured out where it comes from, but he, uh, he found a, a, a shirt that you guys had made and he showed me online. He was, look at this, it's from Calgary. And You're he's kidding. found several items from Calgary that, they look almost new, like, and that's the quality level. So our best guess is that they're getting put into some donation thing somewhere, and then they're getting bundled and then shipped out to Guatemala, and they just distribute them for a buck, you know, or whatever it is. So Wow. Yeah, it's pretty surprising. So, like, you're popular in Guatemala now. Cool. Yeah. I so it's, it. it is funny, though, that that shirt came from Canada, from maybe Toronto or wherever, probably came to Calgary. Someone put it in a bin. 
after they were done with it, it gets shipped to Guatemala and now it's on its way back. Wow. So it's had some, had some travels. <laughs> That's kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. I'll have to, we'll get a picture of it when he's back. He's back in a few days. So yeah, yeah it'll be kind of neat. Oh, that's super so, cool. Yeah. So, so what else is on the go? So you guys, yeah. What else is cool and happening in the garment industry? Great question. Uh, so we, we've always been pretty ambitious, right? We're mm-hmm. young, you know, I'm 33, relatively young, we'll say. Uh, it's all over. A couple yeah. more years, it's over. <laughs> you got lots of time. But in, but in business, I'll say we're young, yeah. right? We've been in business for eight years. And I think we came to the realization that we've tried every which way to scale and grow local laundry. Yeah. And, and the, the realization we've come to is you can't scale local, right? Mm, we're mm-hmm. local to Calgary. Sure, makes sense. And we can certainly be a little bit more local to Canada with some of the custom stuff and, you know, not the YYC stuff. And so there's a little bit of growth outside Calgary, but for the yeah. most part, you know, we are local to Calgary. Mm-hmm. And we could try and move away from that so we can scale a little bit more outside of Calgary, but then we sort of lose that localness to Calgary. And that, yeah. that's what's made us who we are. And so we're conscious of that too. So we came to the realization that we, we can't scale local. And so if we want to continue to grow and, and build a big business and, and continue mm-hmm. kind of fulfilling our dreams that we have of, of being, you know, um, a big business owners one day, whatever that means, uh, we, we have to find other ways. In debt, that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> In a lot of cases, you're right. But we have to find other means. And so mm-hmm. we actually went through a really incredible program in Calgary called the Growth Catalyst Program. It's run by Mount Royal. Okay. And it's, it's all about, you know, scaling your business. And so you're established, you know, you've got a certain amount of revenue. And if you're really looking to grow and scale in that next part, you go through the Growth Catalyst Program. And it was sort of instrumental in helping mm-hmm. us come up with that growth strategy. And so coming out of the program, you know, one of the key strategies was, was growth by acquisition. Okay. And so we've looked at a bunch of other similar company stars across Canada and looked at how we can potentially amalgamate. And so by bringing more of those in house, you know, we can share some of the resources Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, every business has to do social media in in our space. They have to, there's a lot of components to it. Yeah. But if you're a small shop, it's pretty hard to do all those things. So if we can bring more of that in house and under the brand, it makes it a little bit easier. So in November, we acquired our first business. Oh, great! It's called CDN Brand. They were based out of Kelowna. Very similar company. All mm. of their clothing, you know, same suppliers, made in Canada. Their headwear uh, is made uh, through like the Yupong manufacturers. So like really high quality stuff. Mm. And they had a lot of the same brand values. And so we brought them in. It was owner operated. He was leaving the business. And so wow. we got to, to take out, took all of the inventory, uh, fairly easy integration because there was no employees. You know, there yeah. wasn't a huge operation. So it's pretty simple. And since November, we've, we've kind of been running that brand in tandem. And what was really exciting about that is, you know, he'd built a really great brand. He's got wholesale accounts. He does e-commerce. But we just saw a lot of huge opportunity for the mm-hmm. custom side of the business to grow. And I think that's what we've done really well with Local Laundry is taken this really exciting retail brand, introduced a custom component, and been able to yeah. grow both of those at the same time. And so with CDN, that's our plan is we brought it in. We're starting to fuel more of that custom stuff. We do a lot of hockey hats, mm-hmm. a lot of different mm-hmm. sports events. But the hats are kind of the big seller. Wow. Uh, and then recently, last month, we acquired another brand, which was just a small brand out of Calgary. That one was mainly just to kind of turn the inventory and, and sort of put the brand on ice. But it gives us another one of those brands in our back pocket as we grow this custom side of the business to be able to offer. Right. And so our new path forward is instead of just leading with local laundry and that being our primary driver, we're actually looking more at, okay, we're growing a merch business. And we're growing a custom business. And so all these fantastic companies that we've built relationships with that we've done custom for, you know, TikTok Canada, Intuit Canada, a lot of the companies here in town, ATB, RBC, uh, oil and gas companies, you know, Synovus, we've done work Mm -hmm. with Suncor, Petro, uh, Heartland Generation, a lot of really great companies. How do we build better relationships with them to do more of their merch programs? And so now we're kind of leading with that front and that's our big area growth. And in our pocket, we have the ability to print on a local laundry branded garment. Yeah. We have the ability to print on a CDN branded garment. We have the ability to print on, you know, these other in-house brands. And so we're looking at it from that perspective of how can we make sure, you know, when you think clothing in Calgary and you want to get done something for yourself, right. you think of us. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's some content as part of that. And, you know, my co-founder, Connor, most people mm-hmm. know him through his crazy TikTok videos that he posts on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, you know, he's pretty eccentric. Um, but, but that's kind of the main goal, right, is we want to be... 
We want to be the clothing guys of Calgary and, yeah. and not just from a local audience perspective. That is an incredible brand that we've built and it'll make, uh, you know, that, that product set is specific, but not everyone is looking for that specific product set. And so how yeah, do we make sure that right. we've diversified yeah. our product and give us the ability to, yeah. to grow? You know, what's interesting about the acquisition model and it's that, you know, a lot of times when businesses become successful, then it, it's very frequently not someone from local that ends up buying it. It's someone from possibly overseas or something. And, and we had a, you know, an, a great example of that for ourselves. So we had, when we had our online business, we had a local supplier that was making this amazing tactical equipment. And it was just head and shoulders above what was being built in the world. It was amazing. And then they got bought by a UK company. And then he kept a little bit and we kept going for a little while. And then that got bought by a US company and we were done. As soon as all that happened, we were out. Really? And we just couldn't, yeah, the cost went way up because now there's big corporate money and they have to make these huge profits to, to finance it. But it, it's an interesting opportunity that you'll have because then you can start looking at these strategic acquisitions through Canada. Maybe you go and buy something from the Yukon. That'd be really interesting because there's, who knows of anything that comes out of the Yukon. You couldn't name one thing. Maybe caribou antler handles for knives or something. You know, bizarre thing, right? But you guys could control that acquisition environment so that it's not leaving Canada or in going to the US or into Europe. So that'd be really interesting. Yeah, and so. you know, I think that's that's a larger conversation around yeah. like the economics of Canada, right? And how much we, yeah. we sell yeah. away. Um, and, and that's, you know, back to local laundry and why we want it to be made in Canada and why that was a big uh, mm -hmm. piece for us is that we think it's important yeah. to continue to try and provide more diverse economic activity, right? Buying a company and, and making sure we're actually keeping that in Canada. Yeah. Um, yes, as we grow this merch program, you know, not everything is going to be made in Canada, but we're going to push that as much as we can, right? That's yeah. what we're going to try to encourage more and more of our customers to buy, not only because it's an in-house brand and there's more margin on it, but yeah. that is a better brand. And, right. you know, we're seeing a ton of, in the acquisition space right now, I mean, it's it's busy. It is flooded. There is a I lot bet. of people trying to buy. And I think a lot of it comes from <clears throat> external forces. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with, with some of the, the big thinkers out there, but there's mm -hmm. the, uh, the Cody Sanchez's of the world. And, right. yeah. uh, you know, you see a lot about people now saying, well, why start a business when you can buy a business? And we've sure. got a lot of the baby boomers starting to retire. So there is that kind of generational opportunity right now. Uh, and it is kind of a space that that's ripe. And for us, fortunately, Retail businesses are, are shit, as as mm -hmm. I'm sure you would have known having yeah. any conference site. They're tough. They're not the most exciting. They're, they're sexy on the outside, but they're yeah. awful on the inside because yeah. they are. It's highly competitive. It's it's not always the best margin. You're always sitting on product. You're investing in inventory upfront, hoping it'll sell. You yeah. know, you're kind of guessing on some designs, and then you got to wait on when that product's going to sell. And if it doesn't sell, you got to move it somehow and discount it, but without you know hurting yeah. the brand. And so. There's a lot of moving parts to yeah. a retail business, and it's not an easy business to, to, to go after. So for us, we have a bit of an opportunity because, you know, no one's eyeing up those businesses. We've done sure. relatively okay yeah. in the one that we have now, and so we have a bit of an opportunity to, to acquire more. We've been talking to a bunch, and, and a lot of the owners, especially over COVID, uh, and oh, I'm sure yeah. this is a lot of industries, yeah. but you see a similar path, which mm -hmm. is that pre-COVID, you know, a lot of these businesses were just starting. And then you see the rise of COVID and there might have been a bit of a decline at the start, but then for us at least, you know, clothing, e-commerce and, and a Canadian type of brand or a brand with similar yeah. values, a sharp increase in sales, right? Everyone was home, right. they needed that, they needed something to feel good and they shopped and, and there was a lot of shopping. Everyone was home, they wanted to be cozy. So we saw, you know, a lot of these companies saw a big, big spike in revenue. 2021, similar story, right? Not all those restrictions were lifted. People were yeah. still working from home, still doing something. And so that, that sales kind of continued. And then, you know, sort of tail end of 21, it started to come down a bit. 2022, same thing. But a lot of these companies, you know, new to business, first time entrepreneur, you saw that big spike in revenue. You just kind of assumed that you were growing and now yeah. it's time to invest in that it's growth. It's all good. Yeah. Everything's good. And we were no different, right? Yeah. We did the exact same thing. And and 2022 was a very hard year. That's, I think, the first mm -hmm. time we've ever come close to, to losing everything. Yeah. And so similar thing across these businesses. And so coming out of the end of that, 2023, 2024, you've gone through this massive boom-bust cycle, and most of these people are just tired. They're burned out. Yeah, burned there's out. a lot of burnout yeah. in business. So. so that's an opportunity. 
right? Yep. Yes, we felt burned out at times, but we also see opportunity. And so for us to be able to come to these owners and say, listen, you don't have to close your doors, right? There can be a succession plan here. Yeah. You don't have to let the brand die. We can take things over. We'll structure a great deal where you're still, you know, yeah. you're still coming out ahead. You're not having to shut down the business and, and we'll take over and, and we'll try and, you know, continue this legacy on. And uh, going back to the whole acquisition market, no one's really going after clothing no. companies. Yeah. So it gives us a bit of a space for us to be able to, to make some, some pretty great acquisitions. Yeah, and it's some high altruistic level too. You're, you're kind of maintaining Canada. I don't know what you even call it, but you're, you have your arms around Canada and it's, that's yeah, kind of cool that you're able to do that. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I think we'd love to find opportunity to expand. I mean, Calgary's a very, sorry, Canada is a very small market. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're smaller than the, uh, it's slightly larger than the state of California. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity into the U S is, is pretty big. We actually share a warehouse space with, uh, with another company that's in e-com. They're called Devin and Lang and they do men's and women's oh. underwear. Okay. Uh, fantastic company, yeah. fantastic product, but they have grown substantially substantially over the past 12 months and they're just starting to look into that u.s market right and you just see that the opportunity is so so large and with the push you know again our position with the push into made in america or even made in canada made in north america uh it, it does give a bit of an opportunity to try and right get more of our canadian product here our canadian company canadian brand and try and expand that more into yeah. other markets the, like you must sell some into the states no question it's probably not it's probably a small percentage of the less than five percent. Yeah, yeah, that'd be neat to see that grow. But of course, it has barriers to making it grow. For sure. Plus, I mean, your product's not in the U.S., which it's not barrier one. Yeah, <laughs> getting it over the border. Well, the borders, the border's tough. I mean, going to the U.S. not a problem, right? But I've actually paid more for duties on customer returns coming back into oh, the country than yeah, the cost right. of the product itself. Right. Because I believe the threshold <coughs> selling to the U.S. is 800 So okay. an American can buy $800 worth of Canadian stuff without any tariffs. And I believe the threshold from U.S. coming to Canada is $20. No, is it really? So any any value, wow. any content value coming across the border is subject to those tariffs. So wow. e even, even the cost of a sweater, a single sweater, uh, sending to a customer, they returned it because the size didn't fit or whatever the case was. Coming back across the border, you know, I paid more for the cost of yeah. that garment right. to get the return. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Then, then it makes sense to have some sort of physical entity in the States yep. that you can deal with that stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That's the challenges of business, especially cross border, but wow, yeah. it's brutal. I was, well, I keep going back to this little online thing that we did. We had a supplier in the U S that was dealing with these pretty high end titanium products. And so <laughs> we would buy inventory from him We'd they, you know, we'd have a room full of boxes of his inventory. And, you know, we'd pay to get it to come across the border, duties, tariffs, and all. And then we get an order from the same place that he shipped it from. And it's like, oh, this is brutal, like literally brutal. We have to basically ship it right back. Yeah. And it could almost be across the street. And it was so expensive. And if someone bought one thing, ridiculously expensive. Like it was unmanageable at that point, but... Whatever. That was another challenge because you just didn't. And it, it wouldn't have made sense to even do a deal with him and say, listen, I'll bring everything up wholesale. We'll just put it in a warehouse and then we'll be your distributor in Canada because there just wasn't even enough demand in Canada to warrant that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. It is tough. And that's that's I think what we've come to realize is that that's just the game. Yeah. And, you know, if it was easier, I think everyone would be doing it. But it is really yeah. Uh, it's really fucking. Wouldn't hard it be sometimes. neat if there was like a free trade agreement in North America? It would. Yeah. It would be nice. Yeah, I've heard of such a thing, but <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> I, again, we're yeah. we're in the advantage because yeah. we have that eight hundred dollar yeah, threshold. South. We can yeah. go south, but yeah, there's there's certain countries where it's a little bit hard. We just shipped an order to Peru. So we have a customer in Australia. Oh, okay. They're a travel company. They mm. ordered some of our, our stuff custom and we shipped it down to Peru for one of their, their travel expeditions there. Wow, that's cool. And we're just going through that border process right now and it is painful. Yeah, I bet. We're pulling teeth yeah. just to get it clear by customs. And so you kind of see, wow. right, some governments, like that's, I, I presume that's some sort of protection act where it's like there is a long list of items that need to be done before we let this into the country because they would mm. rather someone source from a local supplier versus like, why are you shipping these t-shirts right. in Canada? You can buy sure. them here. And then the smaller the country gets, the more third world it gets, 
then you have corruption that gets tied into it as well. And True. You'll probably not ship much into those countries, I suspect. So no, no, not something rare. we've had to, to deal with or, or yeah. learn about just yet. Yeah. But it's cool, the qualities there. And I like it. And I th- something you said, which was like, I think a lot of people get this is it used to be like when you go back, let's go 20 years just for kicks, but you'd get these shirts out of, you know, just we're just kicking out merch. We're just like stamp, stamp, stamp. And the quality of the product was terrible. And then I think a lot of, a lot of the guys that were generating stuff, they started to get it. Like no one's going to carry around a duffel bag, for instance, that probably costs two bucks. And then you put on a $10 customization, but it lasts like a week because everything falls off of it. Like it just didn't make sense. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, so the quality is, that's a big deal. I think, I think in some of the men, you know, you look at uh, Lululemon success, success rather, and just there's this expectation of quality that's, that's happened. And, and there's certainly uh, people are willing to pay for it, which is great. They are. So, yeah. And in Lululemon's case too, it's, it's the brand that stands behind that quality. Yeah. Right. And I haven't done this in a while. I don't know if you still can, but I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, even like I had, you know, the hem on one of my pants came by and I dropped it off and, you know, they, they completely fixed it or they'll give you a, a new pair. So there is having. You told me offline that those were tights. <laughs> <laughs> So there is that <laughs> expectation from the consumer yeah, of yeah. quality, but then, you know, the, the company has to back that too. Yeah. And, you know, it, it kind of goes back to, you mentioned, you know, 20 years ago, these, these yeah. crap t-shirts, but 40 years ago, they were good, right? You look yeah, even at those, true. you know, cheaper column promotional shirts and a lot of them were, were actually made in Canada. Oh yeah. You, you know, even, even the, the kind of lower end and I say lower end is because now they're, they're lower end, but a lot of those, like you look in, you know, my dad's closet or your, your father's closet and, you would still see clothes from 40 years ago, 30 years ago, because they were made to last Mm -hmm. versus now. Right. I mean, I remember buying a shirt from, from old Navy and it was just a button up when I worked at the bank and within, within months, like the armholes completely worn out. And so that, that's just kind of how things are made right now. And, and, you know, one of the things we've fallen back on is, is we just, we don't make good stuff anymore. Right. It's so hard to come by. And, as consumers, we sort of have this perception of, you know, we want to, to buy something cheaper because because it's cheaper, but you actually pay for it more in the long run. Yeah. Right. Like these these boots I have, they're they're really high quality, made in Mexico, great, great entrepreneur who's made them. I'll have them for years. Mm-hmm. And I might have to swap out the sole. My business partner Connor, same thing. He's got some from Alberta Boot Co. Okay. And, and we'll have them for years, right? But I've I've had other pair of boots that I've bought for, you know, call them sixty, eighty bucks, and they last two years. Yeah. And then there's no repairing them because, you know, they're not quality enough to yeah. repair them. And so we're just kind of in the cycle of, you know, buy cheap, throw out, get new, buy cheap, throw out, get yeah. new versus this buy quality that's going to last you. And then there's also an industry in repair, right? That's an industry that's right. almost gone is yeah. repairing. Yeah. And again, I keep going back to, you know, strength of the Canadian economy, but strength of the economy in general is, is there used to be corner stores of people that repaired stuff, right? And that, that's yep. sort of gone. It's and shocking when you find that, like, yeah. you know, you find a shoe repair place and it's like, dude, how can you afford to stay in business? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that there's some of it left still, but I think that's a really big challenge as we look at the next 10, 20 years from an economic perspective is, is how we're going to let that happen. And, and, uh, I'll use the example of Amazon, mm-hmm. right? I think my wife bought a, a mattress the other day and it was for, for one of our kids. You know, they grew out of the bed. It's bizarre. You can buy a mattress. That, got, got this mattress, showed up the door next day, you know, fantastic from a customer experience, fantastic yeah. experience, right? I got a bed next day, which obviously we yeah. needed one. We were swapping beds for our kids who outgrew their bed. But you open up the package and, you know, it's from this this company that, you know, likely has no presence or right. or entity or any sort of tax in Canada. Yeah. And so the rise of sort of e-commerce and, and these massive platforms also gives way to the ability for for other companies in completely other countries to, to now be able to use Canada as a base to sell products without really having to invest in, in people or mm-hmm. infrastructure or anything here. And so again, back to the, the, the importance of, of supporting local, uh, we're huge advocates for it. And, and I think it's something that we have to be conscious of because yeah. that, that pretty quickly can erode the economy in general. Who are the other big, like, like, is there other big Canadian companies that, w- you know, we should put on the wall and say, this is the Canadian thing? Uh, I think one of the, 
sort of key players that we look up to is Canada Goose, right? right. Um, yeah. They, at least up until my last knowledge, had made all of their jackets mm. and, you know, high quality parkour here in Canada. And, and to an extent, you know, they've, they've really helped kind of push that needle to kind of showcase and justify right. that a high quality made in Canada product is worth a high price point. Right. I mean, that's a very premium kind of league of its own product, but it has sort of given way to, to consumers or people at least knowing that, okay, if it is a quality made in Canada product, it, it should have a quality high price point as well. Right. Yeah. Is there others? Like it must, is Patagonia in Maine? That's in the U.S.? Or? Patagonia is, is made all overseas. I was actually oh, okay. looking at this yesterday uh, randomly, but one of their vests huh. made, in, made in Thailand. Oh, okay. So, again, incredible brand. You know, yeah. I, I give huge kudos to Patagonia and the founder of Onchfard. You know, incredible story. Yeah. Uh, he recently, uh, what was the move? They gave all of their shares to uh, hmm. wildlife or environmental nonprofits. Wow. So basically said, our only shareholder is the planet. Wow. So from an That's ethos cool. perspective, very <laughs> cool. And and yeah. they've made huge leaps and bounds in the past couple of years around sustainability. So using recycled polyesters, right? So not right. virgin fabrics, yeah, yeah. it's all recycled. Uh, and then obviously working with their factories to make sure that they are you know, responsible yeah, and yeah. safe and, and good working conditions. They also have a crazy uh, guarantee they do. situation. Like it's just basically just send it to us. Yeah. We'll, we'll fix it. But yeah. it, it just kind of shows that, you know, oftentimes for companies and, and, you know, to no fault of their own, but they'll go to where more of the cheaper labor sources right. yeah. and, and for Patagonia in their case, you know, as long as they're making a very responsible and, and quality product that, you know, for, for the sake of the environment is going to stand to last and they stand behind that commitment and they'll repair it sure. for you if it fixes, yeah. then, uh, then, you know, that's a net positive. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I guess it, one thing that's kind of neat about it is it does showcase the opportunity for, you know, a sustainable manufacturer too, right? So it's yep. uh, that's a that's a big deal to people these days. They people care. Although, what was interesting, there was a I forget where I saw it, it was maybe a YouTube video, and they were talking about. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, they were talking about jeans. This could have been an old video, and this company did a test of. Did you see this? Like no. you may have seen it, but what they did was they had they had the exact same pair of jeans. One was manufacturing. It was either Canada or the U.S. And one was manufactured externally, like in anywhere else, just pick one. And then when they took it to the store, and they were identical, like you, you wouldn't be able to really identify a difference. They just had branded one on the, on the shelf says made in Canada, and one just price tag, you know, not made anywhere in particular. And the guy said that the differential on the jeans, they, they couldn't be more than 50 cents different. Otherwise, people would just go to the cheaper product. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, it's just like, wow, like, how are we not being more supportive of, of a Canadian manufacturer? It just is shocking to me. It is. And, and you see, you see a lot of the stats around uh, consumer saying, you know, I'll spend more if the product is more sustainable. And, and there's certainly a segment of the market to that, but it kind of goes back to the test, right? Of people saying, oh, well, yeah, of course I recycle everything and I'm very diligent about it. Uh, but then when they actually sorted their trash, it's like, well, you said this, but what you did was <laughs> yeah. something completely different. Yeah, yeah. So th there is part of that, right? And and you know, to no fault of their own, I think for some people, sure, there's price pressure, right? Like I think everyone's feeling sure. a bit of a pinch right now, less discretionary income out there. And so it's easier to buy the cheaper. It also feels good to get a deal. Uh, like we, one of the brands we acquired, we, we just liquidated the inventory. We did 90% off. Mm. Massive sales because people just felt like they were getting a great deal. And they were, right? It was 90% yeah, yeah. off. So there, there's a lot of, you know, consumer psychology, consumer pricing, everything kind of into that mixture that, that make those, uh, that, that kind of, I, I find the stats just kind of funny, right? Because we could hang our hat on saying everything we're going to do is sustainable, but then if we have a cheaper toque that's, you know, just general acrylic, yeah, which absolutely. is, you know, synthetic based, that's the one they're going to go for. Yeah. So I think people like you to be more sustainable. They encourage you to be more sustainable. Like as a consumer, they'll, they'll tell you to be more sustainable. But then when it comes to the buying patterns, you know, they're still going to do what's best for them. Yeah. And, and that's everyone else always. should buy the expensive one though. Right. Everyone else, <laughs> but not me. So I, again, as a company, I think yeah. it is important that we are, yeah. we are being responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, oftentimes you are, you're, you're giving the consumers what they want. And, right. and there is a balancing act between 
being more sustainable or being more price conscious. And as a brand, that's why it's important to, to really drill down on who your customer is, right? Patagonia, yeah, yeah. they're not going after just the, the generic shopper who's looking for a price deal, right? They're going right. after the people who truly either want to buy a premium brand because having a Patagonia jacket means you spent a lot of money on that jacket. Sure. It feels yeah. good. There's that. Yeah. But then there is also the environmental piece of that, which is, you know, I take my brother, for example. Um, there is the side of, of customers that will proudly wear a vest that's duct tape and they get credit for that because, you know, they're out climbing yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, <laughs> don't hurt the environment. Like you don't yeah, need yeah. another one, right? So yeah. th there's knowing your customer. And, and yeah. again, that's been an interesting thing for us acquiring these different brands is they are different customers, right? And right, what works for yeah. one is not going to work for the other. Yeah. You know, it's a, it, like it would be a fascinating study like beyond the scope of what we're talking about even, but, you know, where you could take the brand name and then the, get that brand name ultimately associated with quality and that like i don't know how you do that other than you're gonna have to have you know 20 years later you're gonna be able to say this was made in like back in 2015 like and look at it yeah you know it's gonna be that'll be an interesting kind of trend it'll probably take a long time to where someone can say this is a this is quality and that's why i buy it because it's quality it's i i don't even think it takes that long yeah Sadly, I think we're at a place, especially in clothing, where yeah. quality can mean it lasts more than six months. <laughs> I've worn it five times. This is unbelievable. Which is sad to say, right? And, and yeah. you know, yes, we we uh, will have stuff that will end up in, in, let's say, Goodwill or someone's donating yeah, yeah. it. Uh, Doesn't mean it's wrecked, though. That just means that all. they're not using it now. You know, perfect example so, of your yeah. son. Like, yeah. it, has, it has been... Uh, bought, worn, loved, donated, then transported all the way to Guatemala and is still in good condition. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't think it takes that long to determine whether or not something's quality, but I think there's a couple factors, right? It's like, how does it feel, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it comes to materials, the, the thinner, you know, you're kind of saving right. on some costs there. So if it feels like it's a little bit thicker, right? And it's pink shirt day. This is a long sleeve made in Canada, pink yeah. shirt. So it feels a little bit thicker. It feels good to wear. It's not scratchy and cheap. Right. And then, you know, how long will it last? And anything I think past six to 12 months at this point, sadly in clothing is, is considered good quality. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It's an interesting thing. I've always been kind of fascinated by, you know, that brand loyalty and you know, sadly Harley keeps coming to mind and it's just like everyone buys Harley stuff and it's like, it could be anybody making that and just hitting, stamping the logo on it, but it's licensed. But there's this, this thought that because it's Harley, it's going to be a better product somehow, which is weird to me because it's not necessarily, I have crappy Harley stuff and then some good stuff, but, it, yeah. but it, there is a, there's certainly a conception that it's going to be a good, and it would be the same for a lot of luxury brands, like a lot of product people buy that they spend way too much on it, it may not even be great and it comes back to brand yeah and that's really yeah, that's what it is yeah. what people are buying yeah and when you're buying a, a patagonia jacket right you're buying the brand yeah it's you can get that quarter zip in a million different ways mm -hmm. you can buy that mm -hmm. same sweater from walmart would sell it right i have a quarter zip Patagonia has a quarter zip yeah. and, and theirs has, you know, there, there is identical products. It just doesn't yeah. have that Patagonia logo. Yeah. So that's really what it boils down to is what is the consumer trying to say about themselves? Yeah. And that's where, you know, clothing for us, I had no interest in being in the clothing business. Mm -hmm. Like not, didn't go to fashion school. We're not fashionable <laughs> at all. I mean, we can hardly dress ourselves most yeah. days. Uh, my wife will always have an opinion and she'll be, she'll be the decision maker oftentimes. Yeah. It's a good thing you're buying hoodies yeah, or exactly. selling hoodies. <laughs> But it, it comes back to, you know, what, what the consumer and what the individual is trying to express about themselves. And clothing is a really unique way because it's, it's, you're wearing it and it's something that people are seeing every single day. Yeah. So what, you know, the kind of suit you're wearing is how you dressed yourself is how you want the world to see you. And so if you put on that jacket with the Patagonia logo, you know, you want people to know that you bought a Patagonia logo and, yeah. it, and it tells people about you, right? It's like, here's a yeah. person who, you know, based on the brand ethos, cares a little bit about the environment, right? Is, is conscious of, of what they're purchasing and is making a responsible purchase or, you know, just like to show them that they have a really expensive jacket and, and right. there's kind of three things within there. Yeah. Same thing with local laundry. When someone buys a local laundry product and they're wearing it around town, you know, they're showcasing that I'm, I, I like to support local. I'm proudly representing Calgary and I like to buy something that's quality and, and will actually last. Yeah. So now the exciting part is for you to blow that message up broadly, even though it's a local situation. That'll be interesting. So that'll be a challenge. 
So a good challenge. It will be a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and part of that just comes down to how you tell your story. Yeah. And I think prior to us doing custom, we did a really good job of that. You know, we've kind of gone away from that a little bit as we've gone to customization. We can't focus on everything. Right. Um, And as we go to try and, you know, help other organizations create great merch for themselves using ours, we've sort of lost the ability to to really focus and and tell great stories around our product. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we're kind of refocusing on this year, but it it comes down to, you know, what are the stories you want to tell about your product and and how is it going to make people feel? Because ultimately that's why people buy something because it makes them feel a certain way. When you buy a Harley versus a a Yamaha, Yamaha. you buy a Harley, you're part of the Harley club. You feel pretty good about that because it's a Harley. Right. And, and it's got that that brand yeah. attached to it. And I think it's very hard to actually build a brand that that carries that weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you can achieve that, it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I was shocked. My daughter's uh, she's 18 and she has brand loyalty that was shocking to me, like to fitness brands. It was kind of weird. Like she it, it surprised me when we went to the store. And said, oh, I wouldn't wear that, but I would wear that. And it's like, wow, I would have never thought that made any sense but yeah it was it was strange to me do you know the brand well she was she's super into uh nike and and she said hopefully no one who works at under armor would ever hear this she said she wouldn't wear under armor it's like what why wouldn't you wear under armor it's like interesting yeah it was weird it's like at, at 18 i guess the kids don't wear under armor weird but there's a different demographic that that's all they wear for sure. It's just weird. Yeah. And then Adidas has its demographic. And yeah, that's strange. And and that's also, I think, the interesting, I mean, brands, clothing, anything, but it's, it's there's a lot of culture ingrained yeah. in it too, right? And we've seen our demographic shift over the years as well. Uh, but, you know, the younger generation, especially, yes, they, they can be very brand loyal and it comes down to yeah. a brand that is sort of uh, doing the right culturally relevant things. Yeah. There's a really, really incredible brand conference that happens every year just at Santa Catarina really? in Banff. It's called The Gathering. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Chris uh, Nealon, a friend of mine, yeah. is the a fantastic conference. Yeah. You get to meet these yeah. brand leaders from, from, I think last year it was, you know, Jeep, it was the NFL, yeah. it was all these sports teams, like the, the, yeah. the best brands in the world. Yeah. And you hear their stories and it is very much about that, that cultural relevancy. And, and I mean, we saw it with Bud Light, right? You mm. hit it on the wrong oh, mark and yeah. it can be done in a, a very, a very poor way. Yeah. In fact, we did a podcast with Chris Nealon. Okay. He was, we got on to a Harley it was, yeah, a big deal that we talked about. So, oh, I bet. Yeah. That, that gathering is a great yeah. Great event. Highly recommend it. Yeah. So every year, every year in Banff. So, yeah. Did you go? You went to We've it? We've gone the past couple of years. Okay. We're, we're cool. pretty proud. Local Laundry is the yeah. official merch partner. Oh, no way. That's and awesome. So we produce Good all the for merch you. for them. We sold some of the last year oh, to okay. uh, to some of the participants there. And then right we gifted uh, all the speakers, got one of our, yeah. our shackets with oh, uh, that's the gathering great. logo on it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Well, listen, you've been here a while and you probably have something else in life to do today. Or is this it? Well, this is it for yeah, now. We're actually, home, for, uh, home for a nap. And meeting at 12. We're hoping to hire someone. Oh, okay. So, Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, so it was great to have you. We'll, uh, yeah, we'd love to see you again. And hopefully the business just continues to skyrocket. Amazing. Well, yeah, thank we'll you so much for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks. All right. Bye for now.